hello. Let's talk about our data visualization. So data is eating the world. Uh, every year we generate more data than in the whole previous history. So how do we deal with that? So if your name is Neo or you're an accountant, you can probably look at that data and figure out it yourself. But if you are like me, like most normal people, we understand it easier when we see it in the form of charts and graphs, etc. So what's data visualization? I like this definition by Andy Kirk. So data visualization is the re representation and presentation of data to facilitate understanding, short and simple. So my name is Alan Menzlevich. I'm from, from right here in Vilnius. Besides being CEO of a duplex and helping my friends at MCharts, I'm also Microsoft MVP in Windows development. So nice to meet you all. So in this short talk, we will try to cover past, present, and the future of data visualization. So in the past, we just used charts to just illustrate whatever else we have on the page. Currently, we have options to engage with that data to go deep and poke around. And in the future, I believe we will be able to uh, put it center stage and do a lot of uh, cool things with it. So let's start with the past and the cheesy quote to remind you why it's important. So in the very early days of the web, we just used a fixed width font, and here we go, we have a bar chart. Later on, we discovered that we can take a single pixel with GIF of some color, stretch it out to dimensions we want, and again, we have a bar chart. Who has ever done that? And the lazy days of them all, just create your chart in Excel, save as image, include it. Here you go, you have awesome data viz. Later on came an era of server-side generators, and the signature piece of software at the time was a tool called Webalizer. Anyone heard of it? Used it? Yes. So this is basically your Google Analytics of the 90s without all the creepy tracking. So at, at that time, uh, we started getting libraries for all kinds of uh, back-end technologies. So we had some library for PHP, some library for .NET, some library for Java. And it all culminated with uh, uh, Google Charts. So right now, Google Charts is a, is a more than client-side library. But back then, uh, it was doing everything on the back-end. You just send your data through query par parameters and get an image in return. So Besides being non-interactive and static images, the main problem of all those technologies was just in, in the name. So everything was generated on the server, and quite often it's computationally complex images that you have to generate for every visitor to your website. So this brings us to present. So by looking at this slide, you may think that this slide deck is like at least five years old, so flash and present. What are you talking about, Alan? Are you crazy? Uh, the point is that whatever we developed in mid-2000s with Flash, when, when uh, in, in, in the field of data visualization, when the writing for Flash was on the wall, we basically spent like five years trying to recreate the same thing in JavaScript. And then we caught up, and now we can move forward. And we are moving forward with JavaScript and SVG. So you probably know SVG as a vector graphics format. But how many of you know that it has its own DOM that you can manipulate with uh, JavaScript just as, 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 as HTML DOM? So working with SVG directly is quite verbose and complicated a bit, but uh, there are libraries to help you with that, like svg.js and snap.svg. So this is the code in vanilla.js, and this is the same result with svg.js. Or you can just use a charting library. So if you want to see amazing things that you can do with SVG and JavaScript, check out this talk by Sarah Drasner. It's amazing stuff. I will show, show you just one short demo from there. So this is all done with just JavaScript and SVG. Awesome stuff. Yes, yeah, so modern uh, data viz libraries are interactive, so users can poke around and analyze the data. They are animated, so we as developers can direct attention to whatever we think it's important for users to see. And most importantly, they are client-side, so they relieve uh, millions of servers around the world from the heavy task of generating images. 
So anyone here whose job description says data visualization? Something? OK, one person. <laughs> yeah, so those people exist. They have their own blogs, conferences, podcasts, and whatnot. And the tool for them on the web, for most of them, is the library called D3. So we, you can do amazing things with D3, but if your title is not data visualization something, then you probably can find libraries where it's easier for you as a normal web developer to achieve the results you need. So just a few demos of D3. So you, with D3, you can do like normal bar charts with some animations. You can use polar chart to show, your, show time. Or you can do some pointless stuff that just looks awesome. Yeah, so this brings us to the future. So I believe that in the future, whatever we, we think is magic in the, in the field of data visualization today, we will, most of us as web developers will be able to do that with some help from libraries. Uh, data tells stories, and these stories can be amazing, and they can help uh, deliver our message to people in a more, way more comprehensive way than words. If you want to see a video uh, talk with amazing stories told with data, check out this TED talk by Hans Rosling. So this talk is more than 10 years old, uh, but it's still amazing. And back then, they had to create their custom software to show you this, this uh, awesome charts. But right now, you can do the same with normal web technologies, and they actually did exactly that. So this is a story uh, of extreme poverty in the world. So in 1800, we, most of us were completely poor. And then we started getting a bit better and better and better. And uh, to, uh, when we come to current days, most of us actually turns out, uh, doing pretty well. So another story, so Ant Lipponen created this chart of, uh, of uh, temperature anomalies from 1900s to this day. And you have probably seen a lot of, a lot of articles about climate change, etc., and it gets pretty boring by this time. But by creating a visual story about it, he was able to attract attention and got more than 10,000 more than 10,000 retweets for this tweet. So he also had to do some Python work on, on the back end to generate this video. But nothing stops us from doing the same thing with just JavaScript. And we can make it interactive. We, we can make it you know, drill down, etc. So who knows where this is? Yes. Who have heard? this story about false missile alert in Hawaii. And anyone has heard of, of this website? No, no one, right? <laughs> so anyone knows what those two have in common? So I'll show you. <laughs> so this is the chart of uh, traffic to Pornhub from Hawaii. So zero is uh, like normal average. And you can see that before, before the rocket went down, it was like somewhere around the average. And then people in Hawaii were just browsing their Pornhub and got an alert. And the traffic went down. Oh my god, we need to run to the shelter. But then the alert was canceled. <laughs> and everything went back to normal. So previously, uh, Mixing various types of charts into single visualization was pretty much reserved to infographics because it was quite difficult to do with uh, standard web technologies and libraries. But now and in the future, it's, it, it is and will be quite easy to do. And the only limiting factor is your imagination, so we can do it whenever it makes sense. Additionally, we got used to using, visual, uh, using extra controls to to filter and drill down our charts. So maybe you would select a country and go deeper, etc. But nowadays, everything is interactive. You can use those same charts as UI. You can use them to drill down. You can use them to filter or just link outside. So a few more demos of this. So 
this is pretty common scenario. You have a map, and then you need to show some stats about some countries. So normally, you would have either have a drop-down on the best-case scenario. You would click and go to some different view. But nowadays, you can just you know, click and, and, and see the data right here, right on the map. There is no reason to, to go out. Or you can just, you know, simple drill down scenario. You go deeper and deeper, uh, and it's all done in the visualization itself. And this is Power BI. So here you have some sort of report. So normally you would also have some controls on the side to filter this data. But here you can just click on some bar chart, and all the other charts are filtered according to that. So we've connected a lot of crap to the internet, and it generates a lot of data, and it's quite difficult to visualize it. Uh, and this is one area where SVG is probably not your best friend. It's your, your better friend is Canvas, when you need to display real-time data with, uh, with little overhead. And another angle from, of the same problem is that you get a lot of, of data, so not always it makes sense to see the raw data. So maybe your data visualization library has had, has to have an option to aggregate it. The same is true to, for uh, machine learning and AI. And additionally, when you, when you put your data through some AI algorithm, you don't even know what the shape you will get in the end. And we've seen to just an hour ago that you can even get a wheelie out of your machine learning algorithm. The world has gone mobile and uh, you know, it's very important these days that your visualization are touch friendly and responsive. This is self explanatory. And again, some few more demos. So, right here, we see some data that is like uh, every minute. But when we zoom out, it gets pretty busy. And at some point, it makes sense to switch to some aggregate data that's shown every 10 minutes. And then you zoom out more, and it, uh, and it changes again. Or you may, in some cases, you may show uh, like a radar, a radar chart, but maybe it's not the best for some people, so they can just expand it and have a bar chart out of it. Or quite common scenario when you have one massive outlier, and if you show it like in real scale, then it it becomes uh, easy to all the other wa values are hard to read. But so the trick many people use is just to break the axis and have this gap in, in the outlier. But then data visualization professionals come and say, no, this is not right because you change the scale dramatically. So, but we have interactive stuff, so we can have both, best of both worlds. You, we, you hover, you see the actual view. You, you get out, you see the one with the cutout. And obviously with uh, mobile, so normally if you show a pie chart, it's the best way to place labels is next to the slices of it. But when you get to mobile, you know, the screen gets smaller, it gets, it gets very busy, and at some point it's just better to switch to a legend. Accessibility is important everywhere on the web and in the data visualization. It, it's quite complicated when you have to do something for accessibility in uh, quite complex graphic elements, but it's SVG, it has DOM, it has all the tools that you have in HTML, so you can actually do that. Or if you're using some uh, third-party library, just make sure that it takes accessibility seriously. And we cannot skip VR, AR, MR, XR, whatever you want to call it. So it remains to be seen if there is anything special about data viz uh, in AR and MR. So knee-jerk reaction maybe to create something like this with a 3D charts, flipping, etc. but these charts are not really useful. It's, it, it's even it even distracts you from understanding and that doesn't help you at all. So we will see where it goes. So this was a short talk. I hope it inspired you to look around and change your ways uh, of how you do data visualization. Check out of the, all of these great materials. And please check out the uh, amazing library my friends at uh, Charts built that help you do all of those. And if you're an introvert like me, but you like to attend conferences, check out my short book that uh, where JLF attendees can get for free from this URL. Thank you.